Okay, so here's a summary of what we had um, in spherical coordinates. We've kind of done the basic uh, calculus, which was trivial, because uh, d is so natural. d works the same in all coordinate systems. So there's d. We're prepared with that. And then the algebra 2 we did is to figure out the star operator that encodes the geometry. And then we've got the correct factors. And it just worked out to be very much like x, y, and z. It was just getting these factors correct. And the key, of course, was to work first with the normalized versions of d rho d phi and d theta. OK. So now it's actually very easy to calculate the Laplacian. It's star d star d f. And I want, I want uh, us to show that you get this formula. Um, and then we'll see how that simplifies a tiny bit to this. But this is really the formula that um, actually encodes the, the process of star d star d f. OK, so good place to pause. Just put this together and feed f through d and then star and then d and then star. And I, try, I promise you, you'll get this. OK, but now I'll work it out. OK, so let's see. So this is star d star of this stuff. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to control C. OK. So there we go. That's a, verse, that's a first start. OK. Let's just, uh, to make the notation a little bit uh, tighter, let's call that F sub rho. And then this is just going to be F sub uh, phi. Let me pick up a phi here. OK. And then this will be F sub theta. OK. First step, easy. Now we do the star. OK. So star, uh, so f rho, it's linear, of course. It's not a calculus operation. It's just an algebra operation. So the f rho comes out. And we know star d rho is just this guy. So I'm just going to copy and paste. OK. Plus uh, f phi. That's the partial derivative respect of phi. And then times star d phi. OK. And then plus, and then f theta. And then d theta is just this guy. Oops. OK, now let's pause. OK, so now we've got um, that's that first star that has um, converted it to this guy. OK, now we do d again. All righty. And again, that's really easy. The d is just going to take the derivative of this stuff. And then we just need to know d of d phi wedge d theta. That's not super hard. OK, so we're just going to take the derivative um, of, all of this stuff. So let's see, d on this guy, what's going what's gonna to live here? Well, if we did a d by d phi, we get a d phi coming out, and that would die. OK. If we did a d by d theta, then it would get a d theta coming out, and that would die. So the only thing that's not going to die is the derivative of this guy by rho. Okay, so that's interesting. Here we did the derivative by rho because that's how d works for on a function, and we pair the rho with the rho. When we do d on a two form, we are really taking all the de all the partial derivatives in theory of this guy. But remember how that works is that only some of them are going to live, and the one that's li living is exactly rho again because we did the star in between that turned a row into the other variables. And that's why we end up getting this, the two derivatives in the row direction. OK, so that's going to be um, d by d rho, which I'll just abbreviate that way, of this quantity. Oops, hello. And then times the d rho comes out from the d of a function, and then wedge the rest of it. OK. Plus, OK, now what's going to happen here? We need to take d of a 2 form. Now here, the only thing that's going to live is the um, d by d phi of this guy, because otherwise we get 2d thetas or 2d rows. OK. So we're going to get d by d, I need to pick up that phi, control c, control v, of this quantity. OK. And then it's all times d phi, where's the d phi, which is coming from the new derivative, and then wedged into what's already there. And we'll worry about the signs and maybe flipping these orders in, in a second, but it's actually going to come out very nicely. Okay, plus 
Um, okay, and now we're going to do the same deal. Here, the only thing that's going to live is a d theta. Okay, so that's going to be the partial with respect to theta of this guy, then times d theta wedged into what's already there, which I'll copy and paste. Boom. Okay. So let's just uh, let's just put all that together. Now notice we've got rho phi theta, and if we look cyclic order, rho phi theta, rho phi theta. Hey, they're actually all the same. So we get plus signs everywhere. Not too shocking, because remember, it's supposed to be like a Laplacian, it's supposed to be like uh, the divergence of the gradient. It really shouldn't give us minus signs, and that's what's happening with a uh, with th this, these particular forms in this particular dimension. Okay, so it's really star of. I'm gonna, just going to copy all this, but I'm going to take the um, d rho d phi d theta out because it's a common factor of everything, and I'm just going to put it at the end. Okay, it doesn't really matter which one I use; they're all the same. Just remember, they're all really d rho d phi d theta. Okay. Um, and I just need to star, oh, I guess I need one more parenthesis, though. Let's see. I guess that's all in parentheses, because it's really starring this three form. Okay, so here's this function, this combination of partial derivatives that we're getting. And then that's all times d, uh, d rho d phi d theta. And I'm taking the star of that guy. That's where we use this one. And that just puts this factor in front. Rho squared sine and I'll grab the phi from the, the answer, okay? And then it just kills, it just turns that three form into a one form. And then what's left is just this. I guess I already have parentheses around it. Boom! And that's exactly what we wanted to get, okay? So um, I wrote it in just slight, slightly different form, but it's, you've got the derivative of rho, of f with respect to rho, times a certain factor, then times another derivative, then another derivative, and then a factor on the outside. Here we've got a derivative with respect to phi, a factor, then another derivative with respect to phi, and that common factor on the outside. Same pattern. F, you derivative with respect to theta, a factor, then another derivative, then the common factor. So lot, there's lots of derivations of this formula, but this is really nice because this is the, this is the tidiest way to write the formula, or almost the tidiest way. Um, and it really exhibits the structure of what's been done to it. You take the d, which is producing these derivatives. You do the star, which adjusts things based on the fact that d rho, d theta, and d phi were not orthonormal. Then you do another d, which just produces these new derivatives. And then you have to do one more star to get from a three form to a uh, to a one form to a zero form, rather a function. And that produces this overall factor, which is the familiar factor that uh, is inside the volume form. Okay. Now, what about this last step? That's not hard. You can pause it again if you want. Um, that's just recognizing that this is a little bit uh, overcomplicated. It happens to be that the sine phi doesn't depend on rho. Okay. So that can come out, and then it cancels with the sine phi here. And so you get 1 over rho squared here. Um, the sine phi here does depend on phi, so let's leave it inside, although we could do a product rule here if we wanted to, but let's just leave it inside, because why not? And then, so it gets the whole 1 over rho squared sine phi as its denominator. And then here, again, the sine phi doesn't depend on theta, so it's going to come out, and so you get a 1 over rho squared sine squared phi um, for its denominator. So that's often what you'll see, but to be honest, it's not really a lot better uh, than this version, um, and this really reminds you of exactly the structure of how it works. Okay, so there's the Laplacian spherical coordinates done using forms. I think it's a very pretty um, and pretty concrete example of how this process works. Okay, so now I'd, I invite you to repeat the process for cylindrical coordinates. Um, good time to pause the video again, or actually I'll probably do this in a, in a part three. Um, and just do it from scratch for cylindrical coordinates. It's going to be simpler, a little bit simpler, um, but basically the same idea, the same process, and you get this Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates. So I'll do that in a, a final, a concluding part three.